Today on Keep Shooting Monday, if I had $1,000 to spend. A blog from last week's show. A good macro lens. A blog from this week's show. And also a very special guest from LensLens.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 68. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Kathy Azar from Catherine Azar Photography. So Canon somehow has made 100 million EF lenses. That's crazy. If you're on the Nikon side, the EF is the newer lens mount that they switched in the mid 80s to. Um, they had this old kind of style lens where, I don't know if you ever even touched one of the old Canon mm -hmm. lenses. Nope. Uh, the back of the lens, and probably most of the people watching the show probably haven't either. No. You actually would put the lens in and then you would take the rear of the lens barrel and turn it in order to lock it. Ooh, interesting. It was separate. That okay. locking mechanism was separate. But obviously the new EF lenses don't do that. That was the old school. Um, but they switched in the mid 80s. And so Do they now, twist on the same way as Nikon? No, they're opposite. They're opposite. That's what I thought. They're opposite. Uh, Nikon is lefty, loose, lefty, tighty, tidy. <laughs> something like that. But uh, Canon is righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. The so, way that you'd think it should be. Yeah, but hey, I don't care. It is. is what it is. Exactly it. Uh, Calumet. They might back come in back. Business. Yeah, they look might at come that. back. The CNA Marketing. Who was that CNA Marketing owned by? Oh, same company that purchased Ritz Camera. Yeah. So that's interesting that basically they're joining forces. I always thought that they should do that back in the day when I worked for Ritz Camera however many years ago. Um, but yeah, so that's that's going to be interesting that they're finally going to be back in business after closing for a little while. And what did you hear about the whole I heard rumors thing? that the Philadelphia one was staying open. Okay, so well it's probably that. under that CNA marketing. Yeah kind of buy out whatever yeah. you knew someone was going to buy it out someone was going to do something with all that merchandise it was too big of a name to let go yeah yeah i think so too uh last thing i wanted to mention today at least in the beginning of the show thing adobe lightroom 5 keeps getting cheaper you can now pick it up for 80 dollars. i'll put a link to buy that if you haven't already upgraded or haven't already purchased it i highly suggest it mm -hmm. um I got or Kathy the, on it, and she's loving absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> or do um, the Creative Cloud bundle, you, too. Yep, you definitely yeah, can instead. do that, too. But if you're not into the whole cloud thing, you don't want to do the Creative Cloud, which actually doesn't mean you're working in the cloud. It just means that just their branding name. Well, and the updates come it. from the cloud, too. Yep, so you get very true. Updates. But anyway, 80 bucks is pretty cheap. I have a strange feeling that they're going to be coming out with a new version in the next mm -hmm. six months. Obviously, I don't have any inside information. But I have a strange feeling that that's something is going to be happening soon. When it starts getting this cheap, typically they're they're looking to upgrade it and do something new. Something's coming. So what are those blog posts that you had the teased one, us about? Last week we were, I was so emotional about <laughs> the topics from last week. You and me both. <laughs> I couldn't get all my thoughts down and so I'm much better at writing things down. So I have 10 tips for playing nicely in the photography world sandbox. And they apply not just to photographers, but to life in general as well, how we treat people and how we can interact. So that will be on the blog and Greg will link to that yep, as well. That's at, actually over on Kathy's blog. Yeah. So it'll be a listing there underneath the description on YouTube or obviously right on the page there. Uh, just above the photo thing down there. Yeah, that. So, <laughs> anyway. They're with us. We've spent the entire day on Sports Field. Oh, the it's, entire day. It's been day. a long day. It's been a long day, Barry. What was the other blog post? The other blog post is about renting gear that, ah. that jumped from one of the posts that we had found about if I had $1,000 to yep. spend on improving my portrait photography, I'd get blank. And that was over on Scott Kelby's blog, and yes. again, we'll link to that. Indeed. And so that got us thinking, what would we get if we had a thousand dollars to spend? So what would yep. you get? Well, at this point, you don't have a whole lot of stuff that you need. There is not a lot of stuff under a thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> That's my thing. If anything, anything that I want to buy is going to be more than a thousand dollars, period. Uh, most lenses are going to be over a thousand. Although I think about it, maybe I could get like a, a, a macro, like a one of five macro mm -hmm. under a thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to do that. But more likely, I would go and I would actually upgrade the audio 
for the show, for here on Keep Shooting Monday. There's nothing wrong with this microphone. There's nothing wrong with this single blue microphone. But I think we could do a lot better. Hint, hint, road, or hint, hint, whoever <laughs> might want else that? want to sponsor. Um, that's so, where I would go, and, and I would put the money, that kind of money into. Would it be more like lapel microphones, or just things that come out um, closer? Or I'm just curious. Either way, we could we could talk about that and how we want to do yeah. it. You know, um, yeah. if we wanted to show more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If we wanted to be more showy, mm -hmm. using a large microphone like that is the way to go. If we wanted to hide the mic and hide it, like mm -hmm. a couple of other shows that we've mm -hmm. talked about before that we like, that we yeah. try to model mm -hmm. this one yeah. after, you just hide the microphone underneath or you Stick just pin it, it to pin it to this and you have a little, little lapel pack that you put in the back of your butt on the... <laughs> thing back that there the belt. Thanks. <laughs> you know put it back in your belt loop or in your pocket or something uh and hide it and and that's another, a good way to mm -hmm. do it too um that's where i put my money how about you yeah well after you printed the image for me last week yep. on the epson printer that yep. you have i kind of fell in love with the idea of having my own printer at home because yep. i just have my old do you have room I would make room. Up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Because it's not that big. Yep. Um, uh, so it's, not, I, uh, it's not. Yeah, the 2000s only, I don't know, 18 inches or so wide, so yeah. it's not a big machine. So the idea of having something like that at home to print for clients was yep. pretty exciting, so I think I would get a printer. And Greg burst my bubble because I was like, I think I'll get a printer. And then I would get, and then I would get. And he said, well, you need ink and paper for that printer. Like, oh. Yep. So um, if I had any money left over, I would probably get the Wacom tablet. Yep. How you say it? She said it right, the, the Wacom, Wacom tablet. And by the way, that is the correct way to say it. I know everybody busts my but. something about <laughs> saying Nikon wrong, but I'm never going to change that. Nikon? Mostly it's that Nikon, the Nikon is, it? Okay. is the proper way to say it. But uh, when I was actually at the photo expo a couple years ago, I mm -hmm. talked to the guy, and it's Wacom. Wacom is the I right like, way to do it. It sounds so much more fun to say Wacom. <laughs> it does. On a Wacom it does. tablet. So they had that. But if I'm gonna, if I was gonna buy one of those, I want one of the big ones yeah. because I have two monitors and it's so big. And what happens when you have those Wacom tablets? It splits your, splits the 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 when you have multiple monitors, it splits the device in half. Oh, so you're gonna if you get a small one, you only have like teeny little exactly, bits. Exactly, exactly. So that's why I gotta go with the big the like one. eight by twelve or something like that. When you have two HD monitors, each nineteen twenty, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. like four thousand pixels wide, and that's a lot. Well, when we were talking about this, we realized okay, a lot of the things that we want are really expensive, yes. <laughs> and sometimes the best way to go is not to buy but to rent. So that sent us into a whole other yep. thing. Very good. Uh, so about renting. what's on your list that you wrote today? You. She, Kathy worked on a very exhaustive list for us today. <laughs> That's what I do. I like to research. I like to research. I like to learn. I like to come up with things. So some of the things that we talked about were uh, short-term use. When you have something, for example, um, I don't usually shoot weddings, but my cousin asked me to shoot her destination wedding in Tahoe. Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> so, Did she um, pay for the plane tickets? She paid for some other things, okay. so, and I would have uh, gone anyway. I yeah. would have gone anyway, so the, <laughs> being able to shoot it was a lot of fun, but I only have my D7000, yeah. um, and so I know I wanted some more low-light capability, and I also needed a second body, because yeah. I needed, I think we've talked about it before, I borrowed mm -hmm. your holster, so I go, bang, bang, yeah, 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 and I thought, yeah. really, people yeah. are like, you look official. Speak, speaking of new bodies, we'll be talking about that very soon, right? Oh, yes! Your new purchase? Someone got a new body. Someone got a new body. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Off the shelf. Yeah. Um, indeed. So I rented um, at that time, I think I rented a 600, which was a reasonable uh, yep. re rental, rental rate. But at other times when my D7000, the shutter went within the first um, couple of months I had it, I rented a D3S. That was before the 4 came out. Boy, yep. it was that fun to play with. <laughs> so things that you can't normally afford, yep. you, can, you can rent. Um, for short term. Uh, test driving. Recently, um, mm -hmm. my 7,000 has been acting a little crazy, so I had a shoot coming up that I knew I had to be spot on. I didn't have a chance to play around. And so I rented a 610, mm -hmm. which <laughs> turns out to be, I liked it very much. I was trying to debate what I wanted, whether I wanted the 610 or the 800. I really wanted the D4S, but mm -hmm. whew, talk about priced out of my market. Yeah. So I, I rented the 610 and really fell in love with it. Well, the nice thing about that is, is that you were able to play with it a yeah. little bit, 
before you ended up buying it. Exactly. So it, you, if there is no local camera store, which you ended up buying it from a local mm -hmm. camera store, but if there isn't a local camera store yeah. in your area, why not rent one for fifty, seventy-five hundred dollars for a couple of days? Yeah. Then you have it, you know what it's like, you have the files you can play with, you can make a much more informed decision by actually yeah. playing with it and touching it and feeling it, well, rather right. than just jumping into a $2,000 purchase yeah. and never touch it just by reading a bunch of guys' reviews and, and yeah. people's comments. And they That's conflict. the wrong way to Sometimes purchase. Sometimes they conflict oh, yeah. the, the yeah. opinions. And I was able to, with, at a local camera store, I still could have taken it maybe out back and played with it a little yeah. bit. But yeah. this way, I could take it, I could shoot sports. You never get a real feeling shoot. with a camera no, and a camera exactly. store. exactly. So I could shoot what I wanted, then take it home, pull up the files, look mm -hmm. at them closely. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't rent this, but Greg let me borrow his 300 millimeter <laughs> lens. You're lucky you got it back. <laughs> and to shoot that on the 610, it was fun to shoot that and then go back to my 7000 and realize with the crop sensor, I had to back up the hill shooting baseball <laughs> to even get, to get the... Um, so it was fun shooting the different kinds of things yep. through renting. Um, another reason is your regular gear is being cleaned or repaired, which mm -hmm. is what I had to do with my 7000 when it broke. You need a backup. You never want to go to a shoot without a backup. Not a major shoot. And nothing, nothing major. You need something. Well, even even minor. I, I think I told you when my shutter did die on the 7000, I mm -hmm. was doing headshots. It was a friend, so it was really no big major deal. But yep. I had my D, my old trusty D50 <laughs> that I learned how to shoot on, but it was fine with the five focus points, mm -hmm. five. Ugh. But it was fine for a headshot. I couldn't live without more than 30 or 50 points anymore. Well, now I go back to it. I don't even know how to work it because the aperture in the shutter it doesn't have the two wheels, so I'm always fussing oh, trying, yeah, to, trying right. to set it up and yeah, figure it out. The, the entry level bodies only have a single wheel. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the other is what we kind of talked. We already kind of covered, but the the stuff that you're drooling over is too expensive, so you can you can rent to play yep. with it. Um, special purposes. I've kind of jumped all over here because that's the way I'm rolling today. Um, but if you have a shoot where you need a macro lens and you don't have one, and mm -hmm. you know you don't want one long term, or we all want them, but mm -hmm. you don't need it long term, yep. you can borrow it for something like that. And the last one is uh, you don't want to ship or schlep your stuff to your shoot. When I did the um, wedding in Tahoe, thankfully I had my sister and her husband who acted as my Sherpas because <laughs> there was no way I could have gotten my suitcase, my lighting stands because yeah. I took that because I didn't know what I was going to need, and all my photo gear and my think tank mm -hmm. airport bag mm -hmm. and get it all to one place. I just don't have that many hands. I can yep. multitask, but not like that. So Well, you need more uh, Pelican bags so you can ship it or cases you can ship you it. You could do that too, but yep. then you risk... You know, you have to insure it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a rental company, ship something basic, even like yep. stands to your destination, to then you've got them too. Yep, that's a good way to go. So coming up on the show, I actually have a very special guest from LensLens.com that I talked about. I teased you about early in the show. And coming up next is a macro lens question. Interesting. So Frederico sent over this question about a macro lens. We've got the greatest names for people who give us comments. There are some pretty cool ones as long as they put their real name in, which... Well, the, fun, is, the, 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 the last few have been funny ones, and that's... Yeah, good that's too. true. But good like point. Good point. I'm looking to experiment more with a macro, and I'm looking for a cheap but good macro lens. There is no such thing as cheap and good. Just to <laughs> make that clear. Uh, do you have any suggestions? I shoot an icon. I'm not interested in extension tube or close-up adapter. And I'm not afraid of manual focusing. Good. That actually does add to my answer. Uh, although you did not give me your, tell me what body you have, because that could make a difference. Um, two ways you can go. Number one is Nikon just released a new 60 millimeter 2.8 G lens, which it will focus on all bodies and works really good. Um, they really finally well. redid their older 60 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. It's like five ninety nine, dollars something like that. It's under mm -hmm. $600 for that lens. They also make an older 60 mil or used to make, 60 millimeter D lens. And that D lens isn't going to autofocus on any body that does not have the autofocus motor built into mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. All right. And, but it's still a good lens, nice and sharp. I've done plenty of images with it. I still use it all the time. And I think I only paid like 300 bucks for it used. That's a deal. That's a pretty good deal. You can probably find them on like KEH, eBay. You probably find them all over the place, B&H maybe. And some of these and, lens companies will um, sell used gear too. Yep, that's a very good point. Did you mention that in the blog post thing? 
I did not. Okay. Maybe we should talk Despite about I that. I need to. Yes. Yep. Okay. We got to talk about that. Put that in there. <laughs> mental note. Actually, mental notes don't work for me. I need to write it down. <laughs> or somebody needs to write it down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Up next is our special guest from Lens Lens. I'm here with Matthew Bruce from LensLens.com. He had contacted me a while back about uh, promoting his service. He is, uh, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, the only rental service that's still open here in Philly. Is that correct? Uh, so we're the only dedicated rental option. So there's uh, a few video places uh, that okay. do high-end cinema, but as far as I know, we're the only uh, photography-focused rental option here in Philly. Okay, very good. And obviously you have a little bit less... Uh, competition now that Calumet is out of business, or at least for a little while, because they, they were doing rentals for a while too, right? Uh, correct. So okay. a, they had a pretty good inventory, uh, and they were great to work with. So I'm actually sad that they were gone, but uh, wow. I'm glad that we're we're here, you know, helping to pick up the uh, the slack. Okay. So tell me, my, my big question is, why Lens Lens versus some of the other competition? Why should we go with you, um, you know, just... Give, give me a give me a top five or a couple really good strong reasons. Yeah, absolutely. So for the people in Philly, uh, the number one reason is definitely that you can come in, you can play with the gear before you you take it out, mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about missing FedEx or UPS if you're if you're having it uh, shipped. And then if you're not in the Philly area, the the biggest reason is well two things. One is our our rewards program where you get ten percent of your rental fees as a rewards, it's sort of like airline miles for, for rentals. And then the second one is we'll work with you to make sure that we get the gear in your hand. So if you need to have it shipped to a FedEx office uh, mm -hmm. or some location, you know, other than that, so that you can get the gear that you need for a shoot, uh, we want to make sure that it's in your hands when you need it. So uh, we'll work with you to make that happen. Okay. And how do those points apply? Do they apply to another rental? Can they apply to a purchase? It, so they apply to any future rental. So, okay. uh, you know, if it's 10%, basically every 10th rental is free if you think about it that way. Nice. So uh, that's 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 good. And that's an automatic thing? That's not something that we need to sign up for or anything like that? Nope. Uh, when you do your first order, you'll get a little email associated with it that says, you know, if it's a $100 order, you earn 10 Lens Lens dollars, uh, and they'll just sit in your, your Lens Lens account. They don't expire for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't expire as all as long as you have a purchase every year. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they just sit there waiting for you to use them. Oh, very good. Now, I know for a while when we first talked or we first emailed back and forth, you didn't have any Nikon gear. I'm glad to see that you, you were able to add uh, a few pieces of Nikon gear. So let's stay on the Canon side. How much Canon gear do you have uh, to, to lend out, and um, are you ever out of stock of stuff? Uh, certainly for the, the less popular items, the you know, for – Items that uh, we only have one copy of, like an 85-1-2, okay. uh, definitely if the, that one copy goes out. But for the more popular items, 5D bodies, 70 to 200, 24 to 70, we haven't had a, a situation where we've been out yet. Okay. Uh, and for those sorts of items, I'm perfectly happy to purchase another one if, if we're out of stock and someone wants to rent one. Okay. And um, what other bodies do you have? That was actually one of our questions that Kathy and I had come up with. Is it just... Is, are you just lens focused or you're all, you also have a bunch of bodies too? Yeah, so we have 5Ds, 6Ds, we have a T5i. Uh, when the new 7D Mark II comes out, we'll probably get a couple of those. Uh, okay. But we haven't wanted to get the 7D because it's sort of at the end of its lifetime. Uh, on the video side, we have a C100 and we'll be bringing in uh, some more video as well uh, in the near future. Okay, what about stands, lighting, gear, anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have light stands, we're, we have Avenger C stands. Uh, and then on the lighting side, we also brought in uh, Profoto 8As and Profoto uh, Pro Heads uh, and uh, all the associated modifiers as well. So we have that gear as well. Very good. Do you have uh, radio remotes, that kind of thing we can use with those? Yeah, absolutely. We have pocket wizards. Uh, we have enough pocket wizards that you could go crazy and put one on every <laughs> single uh, different pack if you wanted. Uh, that'd be cool. And so I think I was thinking about this, I've, or I've always wanted to do this. When I'm at a sports shoot, have that second camera set up. And do you have the... So I could I could rent a camera from you and rent the Pocket Wizard set to fire off that camera remotely if I wanted to. That's neat. It, yeah, exactly. And that's uh, exactly what the new Pocket Wizards are, are for. It's why they're better than the, the old ones. Uh, okay. We have the special little cable that you need to hook it to the 5D or the Nikon D800 or, or what have you to, to fire it remotely. Okay. And on the, can, or I'm sorry, on the Nikon side, what bodies do you guys have in? Do you have any yet? 
that we don't have any bodies yet. Uh, we're, we're looking to figure out where the demand is for Nikon because it's a slightly smaller market share than the Canon, but we're mm -hmm. definitely looking to get some in in the, the near future. Okay. If I would have to guess, I would say you're probably just going to stick with a with a 610, an 800, and then either a D4 or a D4S if you're going to start off. I Personally, I wouldn't go any lower than that. Um, you know, if I was going to rent something and I just needed it for a backup, you know, I probably wouldn't want to spend a ton of money on it. So a 610 would probably be adequate for me. And so, you know, that $50, $75 range for, like you said, the, the three-day rental, like you had sent me that list of prices, you know, that would make sense to me. And it wouldn't be that awful expensive. So that, uh, I, I think, would be a good way to go for you on that. Yeah, price. absolutely. Those are definitely the ones we're looking at. Okay. Very good. Um, what other stuff besides uh, cameras, lenses, video? Is there really anything else you can rent at all? Uh, um, laptops, anything like that? Camera? Uh, or, uh, not right now. When it, no? One of the other ones that has been pretty popular is uh, on the video side. We have the Atomos external recorders, uh, and they they allow both out of say a D eight hundred on the the Nikon side or a five D on the the Canon side for you to record full. Uh, 422 10-bit video uh, out of the HDMI port, and you get just much uh, much greater flexibility on the, the post-processing. So they're a great little add-on for uh, DSLR video shooting. Okay. The last thing I wanted to, to mention, or, or you said you emailed me something. I don't remember what this question was. Um, earlier in the show, we talked about all the different reasons why you should rent gear. Uh, Short-term use, test driving, gear being repaired, uh, you need a backup. Um, if it's too costly to own, like if you have a, you know, a 300 28 or something like that, you only need to use it once in a while. Um, right. And then, of course, shipping gear like we talked about. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to remember what this last question was. Oh, um, what's your buyout program? Talk to me about that. Did you have a buying program where you can either buy the rental piece that you have or you can do something else with it? Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have what's called our uh, rent it, love it, buy it program. Okay. Uh, and it's got two options. Either uh, you can contact us uh, for a quote on the exact piece of gear that we ship to you that we'll, and we'll give you a, a used price based on how old the lens is uh, relative to our inventory. Or you can ship it back and if you decide to purchase and you purchase through Adorama, who's uh, one of our partners on this, uh, we'll refund our, our rental charge uh, because they uh, we work with them to, to send them business. So okay. it's really a win-win. You can effectively try out a piece of gear for free and decide whether you want it and then uh, and then buy it. Okay. Would you Do you do any trades? Uh, in terms of what? Sorry. Say someone wanted to upgrade their 70 to 200 and they, they wanted the newer version. Would you take an, an older one in trade? Uh, that'd be a case by case basis. It's not okay. something we've looked at before, but, uh, you know, definitely have them email me and I'd be uh, more than happy to talk to them. Okay. Very good. So if, uh, people want to get in contact with you, how can they do this? Is there a contact form on the website? Yeah, there's contact form on the website or we're on Twitter at lens lens doc or sorry, at lens lens. Uh, we're on Facebook, all the, the standard ones. Uh, and then, you know, just our, our phone number, we're at two one five six eight seven nine three nine four. Uh, and we'll be happy to talk through any questions you might have. Very good. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody can try out Lens Lens. Please leave them a review either on Yelp or on Google. Uh, try them out. Let me know how's it, how it's going. And uh, I know I'm going to be trying them out and see how easy the service is to send everything back and forth. I won't be coming down to the showroom unless it's like a one-time thing. Uh, do you have like a bigger showroom place so we can kind of... You know, talk so here. We have an office where we okay. keep all the stuff, and uh, anyone with uh, just shoot us an email. You're more than happy to come in, try out whatever gear you'd like. If you're uh, debating between two different lenses for a shoot, you're welcome to come up, uh, slap them both on a camera, and uh, see which one you like better. Sounds good. Well, hopefully, one of these days we can actually get together in person and uh, make this happen. So, thank you very much Absolutely. for coming on to the show. Uh, if there's anything in the future you'd like me to promote, please let me know. You know, tweet it over to me. I'll gladly retweet it, anything like that. Uh, I'd love to continue a, a really strong relationship, so we will go from there. But uh, thanks, everyone. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. Awesome. Thanks, Greg.